can we start with a brief summary of your writing career? Of course. Um, in 2014, um, I published my first uh, book that was uh, through a digital publisher. It's called I Have to Tell You. And um, it, it, it was sort of lucky enough to get some buzz because the uh, digital publisher itself was just launching. So it got like a little bit of buzz in like the LA Review of Books and like Publishers Weekly. And from that, I sort of parlayed it into getting an agent and then some other stuff. And um, my kind of debut novel, Moon Calves, came out in 2019. Um, and uh, mm, I have a novel coming out called Autonomy in 2022 uh, with Dundurn Press. And the uh, film rights have been purchased, which is very exciting, um, by like one of my total idols. So I'm, I'm really pumped. That is very exciting. I know. Ah! Um, and uh, what else? What else? What else? Uh, oh, and I'm working on a, uh, a project that I'm very excited about. It's my first foray into nonfiction. Um, and it's, uh, it's kind of top secret for now a little bit, but I am also very excited about it. It's going to be a full length book. So that's kind of where I'm at uh, as an author. Um, I edit fiction for Broken Pencil Magazine and um, I try to sort of, you know, engage in the community as much as I can in quarantine. Um, that's super important to me. Top of my head. Um, now, did you always know you wanted to be a writer? Like, are you a kid who at six started keeping journals and writing short stories and stuff like that? Is it been this thing that has compelled you for as long as you can remember? Yes. Um, uh, when I was about eight or seven, my dad got uh, a computer. And at the time they were like, you know, these big sand colored, you know, like monstrosities but it had word processing software. He was writing his thesis his, or his, his dissertation, PhD, I guess. Um, and uh, I would come in when he would go to like, go for lunch or go to the bathroom and I would see the word processing document with like a little cursor blinking. And I would be like, wow, that's like what a book is, except he can make the word like, you know? And, and for me, it wasn't super tactile. My introduction to writing, it was very much, um, it was very much, being enchanted with word processing software um, and wanting to, and, and understanding that that's kind of like, uh, no matter how sort of um, um, immaterial the link was, I knew between like word, pressing soft, word processing software and like publication, <laughs> I knew there was a link. <laughs> and I uh, would sometimes like, you know, write stuff in his, in his, you know, and he'd get all of that. And, and then he would like open up a word document for me and I would do some writing. And I sort of, became really besotted with um, how, how, how uh, uh, like d digital text, I guess, looks on the page. So um, kind of like the, like, the, like, like the way that a sentence sort of looks is important to me. Um, I think because there was that sort of connection when I was really young and kind of just being amazed at this glowing screen full of um, beautiful looking words. Same thing with fonts. Anyway, yeah, so that was, <laughs> and, and I guess uh, secondary to that, um, I knew that I wanted to be a writer probably when I was about 16, because I'm just, I'm not good at very much. Um, and I, I just kind of knew that like, this was the only thing that I'd be good at. So I was like, all right, let's, let's figure out how to make a living um, <laughs> from this. So yeah, I think in terms of utility and also in terms of being like super besotted with uh, um, uh, that old computer, I... Uh, I put, yeah, I, I, I sort of knew pretty early on, I think. I just turned 32. I don't know if that's young or old. It's kind of in the middle. Um, <laughs> and uh, I, um, I think that, uh, that that places me pretty much right in the middle of the millennial generation. Yes. Um, and I think that we were sort of a unique generation in that we kind of had both. So like I had summers growing up where, um, if I ran out of books to read, I would just reread my books. And, and if, and if that got to be too boring, I would go outside and I would like dig holes and throw rocks. But at the same time, when I was about maybe 12 or 13, yeah, there was that sort of shift into web 1.0 and like eventually kind of digital sociality and that sort of thing. And so I did write longhand a little bit um, now and then, but I really, yeah, I really did kind of prefer, uh, uh, writing digitally you know and, and, I, and I, one of my one of my closest friends who's uh, um, a professor at U of T now she's so brilliant Maria um, we were 
sitting together about a decade ago and she was saying, and she, she's also an author. Um, and she was saying, yeah, I'm going to go home and I'm going to write. And, she's, and she made this motion. Yeah. And I thought, yes, that is so interesting because if maybe we were just a little bit older, it would be like this. And then one of Anne's favorite questions is always to authors, which font is your favorite? I love Times New Roman. Um, that was the font that my dad used. To, I know, I'm so basic. That was the font that my dad used to write his dissertation, I believe. And so it, it just feels comforting and warm and it's not very ostentatious. It's not very distracting, like maybe... Um, um, Garamond or something or um, yeah it's know. clean and it's I like it too it's clean it's concise it's neutral I, I see it as neutral neutral exactly like it reminds me of the font that the New Yorker uses which and I love the New Yorker's writing because it's so you know I, I think as a rule it's so clear it's like looking into a fish tank and and the beautiful fish inside are like the ideas you know and, yeah. and that's what I love about um, about um, Times New Roman um Regarding uh, typefaces, I'm going to show my ignorance here. Um, I just got the uh, the typeset manuscript of Autonomy, and I don't know if it's a font or if it's like a special like print thing. But I just I looked at it and I'm like, well, that's kind of cool. Um, that's what my book's going to look like. I do know that I chose the font for the cover of Autonomy, um, and I wanted it to sort of look like. Um, um, neon like it like kind of like a neon sign like that sort of writing that's kind of yeah. trendy now. yeah 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 but um and I and I purchased it because it's uh, uh this wonderful you know font designer um but yeah I I I I I am so ashamed to say that I don't know about yeah I, I just know that um I like Times New Roman and that when I received the manuscript recently it was not Times New Roman <laughs> uh. You as a writer, I, there is a, a very strong correlation often between readers and writers. And so I would imagine that you're also a reader. Yeah. I hope. Yeah, <laughs> and, right. and so my question now is, uh, I guess, and again, it's a twofold question. Is mm -hmm. there a, is there a book that kind of you, um, that spoke to you as a child about the world of writing and the wonder of words? And is there a book now that you go back to as an author that you have read many times that you are like, this is my comfort book? book or even the book where this is this is where I want to get to my goal book what, how, how do I become as good as this writer oh wow those okay. are really good questions um I really loved um The Giver by Lois Lowry when I yeah. was a kid it was so it's so elegant like I I think that um it, it showed it I mean looking back on it now as an adult I'm just amazed at the complexity of the ideas that it expresses um, and uh, how and how honestly how it sort of uh, uh, places emphasis on what I would say is emotional intelligence and emotional labor which wasn't even really a like phrase in the 90s you know and like I think that even now we sort of raise our kids to be like you know little um you know, like uh, the, the Wall Street type A psychos and like emotional intelligence is like, eh, that's for girls, that's for nurses. So loved that. Um, I also really loved The Ear, The Eye and The Arm by I believe Nancy. Oh, I know who, I, uh, it's just, oh my gosh. And it's another YA dystopia. Well, The, um, the Giver's a middle grade dystopia. And I know exactly who you're talking about because she wrote The Scorpion, no, Scor House of the Scorpions. Is that right? The first book? I, I know exactly the book you're talking about and I can't remember her name either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, 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 and as you're saying, like, yeah, like uh, it, it for sure turned me on to dystopias. Um, both of my uh, no uh, novels are, are dystopias. The upcoming one is definitely um, set in a, in a kind of a, a crappy um, near future. <laughs> um, and I think that, um, yeah. And, and so, and so the ear, the eye and the arm is wonderfully imaginative and, um, and, it, it 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 showed a sort of a it brought a gritty realism I think to to this kind of future world that it created that was just so enchanting to me you know it, it kind of the way that like the original Star Wars was so um, compelling I think because like the the helmets look really scuffed and like you know um, the the Death Star like has uh, not enough like soldiers there because they don't get paid enough you know like it's just yeah. got this realism to it um 
And yet it's so fantastical. It's, it sort of grounds the fantasy and it completely enchanted me and I loved it. Um, so those two books for sure. Now, 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 you know, it kind of goes with the seasons. Um, I know that he's super canceled, but I grew up um, reading. Um, I was like way too young for this author, but I grew up reading um, John Updike. So I was about like 13 when I was reading about um, all of the, you know, women that he went through and all this other stuff. Um, but there is a uh, uh, Seek My Face, um, which I tend to read in the springtime. Um, and it's, there's, there's a, a women's perspective, which I hate to, you know, give him this sort of credit now because he was, you know, such a misogynist jerk, but he really does kind of nail it. Um, and there's something just so beautiful and unparalleled about the way that Updike, um, the way that Updike um, spins poetic prose. He's so unabashed about it. It's so purple. And yet it, works he, he he's such a master of, of of the moment there's there's no reflection there's no you know um and so and so sometimes i'll i'll read parts of seek my face or in the beauty of the lilies or from the rabbit series just to remind myself that it's okay to go a little purple and to, it's okay to go a little poetic and it's okay to go a little that way um uh who else have i been revisiting um oh my gosh there's so many um uh oh man I love, I, I love, okay, so um, Atessa Mosfag, um, her book, My Year of Rest and Relaxation, it didn't get the best reception, which is kind of unfair, because I think in part because, um, like, not a lot happens, and her protagonist is so unlikable, like, it's just this woman who, like, doesn't want to do anything, but I love it. She's so unlikable and the, the protagonist is so unlikable and, and it's so, it's so beautifully written and it's so awesome. And it's so like misanthropic and it's, it's, it gives me something and I don't know quite what it gives me, but I've been rereading it. I think honestly, this is my third read. Um, my, my third go through. Um, also we leave um, I've been rereading um, the idiot which I know, what a, what a bold title, right? Yes, <laughs> she actually it is. wrote a book called The Idiot, but it's great. And she's so funny and she's so, I don't know, she sort of, she sort of shows me. And I think what I tried to get from her is that um, perpetual, dry, dry, hilarious observations are not antithetical to substance. Or somebody not- else's. But if you got to invite a fictional character to dinner like if we actually were ever allowed people back in our houses um who who would you invite and and any fictional character any time any author any place any genre anything i fear that because of lockdown i've become radically desocialized i know the I, I, I know the thought of having somebody over to my dinner i'm like Ooh, i'm not sure how i feel about this yeah 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 even if i loved them you know i just i don't so let me let me actually try and put myself so back if, since speak. they're fictional i think we can say fictionally they have had the vaccine and they are immune and they cannot bring anything to your house so maybe if that makes it a little better it does um okay who 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 oh man um pardon me um what do i have over Oh, okay. I would, um, Madame Bovary for sure. Oh. Yeah. We, I, 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 we could have a conversation. We, I would be like, you know what? Like, um, your husband sucks <clears throat> and it's not your fault. And, um, <laughs> uh, let's, let's help you sort of like, uh, like reverse. The- <laughs> <laughs> so you'd be giving side. marriage therapy or counseling <laughs> advice to Madame Bovary. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like, like, Love it. Him, like she needed some good girlfriends on her side. You know what I mean? I agree. Um, yes. The power of girlfriends. Her, and yeah, yeah, just- yeah. <laughs> the thought of her in that burning lavender field and just like feeling you know like no like let's let's revert like and uh you know yeah definitely her she's I think you know I think about her a lot like she's a person so I I love that answer um and and and, you know I mean I think the other thing is when we're talking about inviting fictional characters over you you always you know the 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 other um criteria is that that you can they can speak our you your your mother tongue so that you know you can still have fluent conversation you don't need to worry about those pesky translation issues um or COVID so (laughs) I I would like to say thank you so much for your time Tori that was lots of fun um (laughs) I'm very interested to look at auto- autonomy. You're, you said in 2022, right? Do you yeah. know which season you're going to be released? Um, it's go- apparently uh, February. So, so early. late winter? Yes.